Hey everybody, it's Paige, and today's video is going to be another full face of makeup I forgot about. If you guys haven't seen this type of video before, basically I went through my makeup collection, sort of like a shop my stash style video, and I picked out some products that I either forgot about, haven't used in forever, or I don't know if I've ever used them. So <laughs> if you guys are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy and let's go ahead and get started. We're keeping things casual today. I just have on a little sweater type thing and my hair is up in a bun. I feel like I look like I just woke up and that's kind of because I did. <laughs> but we're going to start out with primer. Um, I'm using the Fenty True Matte Pro Filter Primer. I don't remember the last time that I used this, but this is an expensive product, so I wanted to try it out again. I see that it's a matte primer, but I'm hoping it doesn't feel silicone-y, which already it feels amazing. It kind of reminds me of the texture of the Tarte coconut primer. I'm blanking on what it's called, um, but it's like a coconut, like white primer. The bottle is clear. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but that's what this texture reminds me of, and I love that primer. This feels very hydrating. It doesn't have that silicone feel, which I can't stand <laughs> that feeling. Um, and yeah, this feels really nice. I am, I'm a fan so far. I feel like I need to start using this more. <laughs> anyway, for foundation, I actually just put this in my everyday makeup drawer. If you guys haven't seen that video, I will link it down below. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. I haven't used this in a very long time. It's probably not even good anymore, but we're gonna try it today. And I don't remember what my thoughts were on this, so I'm actually gonna shake it up a little bit just in case also my lips are tragically dry at the moment <laughs> i don't know if you guys saw but i did a lip swatch video and i lip swatched every single one of these ColourPop lippy sticks so if you've ever been curious on what the shades look like on somebody of a skin tone of mine <laughs> definitely check out that video my lips are so dry i filmed that two days ago and my lips are still like shredded so this foundation has a little paddle, which I don't know how I feel about this application. I feel like it's kind of gross to like touch something to your face and then stick it back into like a wet product. I don't know if that's just me, but I have this in the shade bronze beige or beige bronze medium tan. <laughs> I don't know, but this has the new sticker on it, which makes me feel like I got this when this foundation was new, which was a long time ago. For my sponge, I'm just using my collaboration with Bling Brushes. You can use code PAGE for 10% off and the link will be in the description box. I feel like I haven't said that in forever. This color looks like it might be a little bit too dark for me, but under all of my bright lights, it sort of cancels out and I think we, we will be okay. This smells like paint. <laughs> I did not miss the scent of this foundation. Oh my gosh, this is rough. It's actually looking really good. That is like canceling out my redness super well. And from what I can see in this mirror in front of me, it looks like it has a really natural finish. Whoa, that looks amazing. <laughs> People used to rave about this foundation, but I feel like I don't really see anyone talking about it anymore. What do you guys think is the new popular drugstore foundation at the moment? Like, what is the one that everybody seems to be talking about? Or is there one? <laughs> I'm trying to think and I don't really know. I can't think of like what is popular right now as far as drugstore foundations. Maybe the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. This is like the newest release that I've tried from the drugstore and I've been growing to really like this product. Um, but let me know in the comments what your favorite drugstore foundations are or what you feel like everybody's talking about at the moment. Here is what it looks like all blended out. I feel like it's probably a medium coverage. I can still see a lot of imperfections going on so I think I'm just gonna try to build it up a little bit and like add some more around my trouble areas and see how buildable this foundation is but so far it looks like my skin like it's not thick it's not heavy and the finish is so natural I am really loving this okay here is what it looks like after I built it up a little bit I definitely got more coverage and I'll say that it looks a little bit less natural where I kind of you know added more product like around my mouth and like right in here but it still looks really good for the most part 
For concealer, we're actually going to go in with a Laura Mercier concealer. I don't think I've ever used this product before. This is the Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer. I think they sent this to me in PR like a month or two ago, so I don't know if this is a new launch or if it's just new to me, but it looks really nice. This is in the shade 1N. And it says it's an ultra long wear concealer. Did I already say that? <laughs> yes, I did. So I'm just going to put some of this on my under eye. Oh, I love this color. This is like my ideal color of concealer. And it looks like it's nice and creamy. It has some thickness to it. But I like the consistency. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Animal Crossing for a second. <laughs> I feel like you guys are probably tired of seeing me post about it on Instagram, um, but I have recently fallen back in love with Animal Crossing. I used to play it back when it like first was popular, or like when it first came out, the New Horizons, last March, April time. Um, I think I started right around Bunny Day of last year, so if that gives you any reference. And I played for a long time, I played for several months, but I kind of like... I don't know if I got burnt out or bored with it, but like about a week or so ago, <laughs> I started playing it again and I am re-obsessed and I'm just like loving playing Animal Crossing. I've been streaming it a lot on Twitch and if you guys like Animal Crossing content, definitely go check out my Twitch. I plan on posting a video on my gaming channel, which I only have like two videos on, <laughs> but I want to post an Animal Crossing video on there soon. so. Uh, that will be linked down below as well. It's just Paige Corin Gaming because I'm a gamer girl. <laughs> Not really, but um, I do love playing video games. I play them every single day. <laughs> Makeup and video games are my two favorite things. So yeah, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. I'm so excited for the Animal Crossing and ColourPop collaboration. Like, I'm seriously so excited. I'm going to stock the ColourPop website until I get my hands on it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, hopefully the website doesn't crash or anything. For powder, I should have shown you before I put the powder in the lid, but this is the Beauty Bakery Flower Better Not Bitter powder. Um, I feel like I don't like this for some reason, but I don't know why, so I figured I would pull this out and try it. So far, I'm loving my makeup. I feel like it looks freaking amazing. So this could make or break the look. So I'm just going to take my sponge and sort of pat this on my under eye area and then I might go for a lighter approach for the rest of my face and just dust it on with a brush because I can already see that that is a lot lighter than my foundation so we'll see how this goes. By the way last time I wore this sweatshirt which was like not too long ago <laughs> I got so many questions on it. It's from Aerie. I ordered it online um, maybe a month or so ago and I got it on sale I think it's originally like 50 something or $60 and I got it for like 34 or something like that. I got it in two colors, this sort of like nude taupey color and then also a more yellow like mustard kind of color. I love both of them. However, they are huge. <laughs> like they are oversized already, which I didn't know. So I ordered them in a 2XL and they're like just too big for me personally and my personal style um but usually i like to wear crew necks and stuff in like an xl to a 2xl just because i like the oversized like comfy feel but this is just a little bit too oversized for me so i probably would have gone with an xl and have that be like oversized um so just a little tip don't like size up too much if you like that comfy look because they're already like made to be oversized so just a little sizing tip they do personally I think they run a bit big I wear a lot of like unisex clothing like t-shirts and crew necks and stuff so that's just my information that I have to share with you guys <laughs> so now I'm going to take my f21 from my collaboration with bling brushes my nails look so sad and I'm just gonna take a little bit more of this powder and sort of tap it on my cheeks and the rest of my face my forehead needs to be set in place all right it's time to take a little mirror break to see how we're looking so far we look pretty good I'm liking it I look a little dry but that's okay because we're definitely gonna go in with some setting powder, and I do use a lot of, not setting powder, setting spray. I use a lot of setting powder because I'm oily and I just feel like this is what helps my makeup stay all day, and then I like to sort of 
replenish the moisture in my skin with a setting spray. But before we do that, we're gonna go in with some bronzer. And I'm going to be using this. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit. I have it in the shade Light Medium. I have never used this before. I actually bought this quite a while ago. I'm pretty sure from TJ Maxx. <laughs> and I still haven't used it. This used to be all the rage. This was like back before I had a YouTube channel, before I could justify spending as much on makeup. Like I could not purchase this back when this was like popping. But I picked it up, I want to say like a year ago. And we're going to try it out today. I think I'll go, I don't even know what shade to use. These two look the same to me. <laughs> These two shades look exactly the same. Oh, I got it from Marshalls for $18.99. <laughs> I'm gonna try to pop one of these out and see. Oh, it does have the name on it. So this shade is Java. And then let me pop this other one out because it looks exactly the same. Oh, Havana. And then the middle one is the lightest, but it looks kind of green to me. This one is Fawn. Does that look good? We'll go with Fawn. We'll start with the lightest one and then we'll build up if we need. I'm going in with my F23 and I'm just gonna coat the brush and sort of like spin it on the back of my hand just to make sure it's nice and evenly coated. And then once it looks like this, I'm gonna try to apply it to my face. I'm going very light handed. Oh boy, it looks like a streak in the viewfinder, but in person I like can't even see it on my skin. Oh no, that's horrible. Okay, we're gonna go even lighter handed on this side. Oh my goodness. I'm just gonna take this and run it along the perimeter of my face. I also need to fix my bun because it's like falling out. <laughs> okay, the bun is temporarily fixed, but I'm probably gonna have to fix it again. Um, I don't know how I feel about this like bronzing kit. I feel like it looks kind of muddy. Um, I don't know. I don't hate it, but I feel like it's like very tricky and it's kind of hard to blend out. So, um, yeah. I have sort of mixed feelings on this at the moment, but we're gonna go ahead and move on. I don't wanna like keep packing on the product and look crazy. So next for blush, I'm going in with this Morphe Blush Trio. This is in the shade Pop of Peach. Look at how cute it is. I'm gonna use the middle shade, which is like the peachiest color. And we're gonna add some, some, some warmth to the cheeks. <laughs> Man, I was like trying to keep talking there, but like I ran out of words to say. <laughs> it's kind of funny because <laughs> I'm better at making conversation with myself because I am talking to myself right now. Like nobody's here. I'm just speaking to myself at the moment. <laughs> but like in an actual social interaction, I am so bad at keeping a conversation going. Like I panic and then all I can think about is what I can talk about and then if someone's talking to me I'm like not even listening to them because I'm stressed about what to talk about next so that there's not like an awkward silence. Does anybody feel that? I don't know if that's like a social anxiety thing or what but I hate awkward silences. Like I just feel so uncomfortable. I feel like I'm like a boring person and like I just oh I feel so bad so yeah. I'm better at talking to myself than talking to other people. I can keep a conversation going longer with just one person instead of two, which makes no sense, but it is what it is. I love this blush color. It's so freaking pretty. The middle shade is called Creator. That is my favorite shade in this palette. I also really like Marker. I feel like Influencer is a little bit too deep and gray toned for me. I don't think that would look very good on my skin, but these two shades for sure are gorgeous. I'm starting to sweat. I'm dabbing, <laughs> dabbing it off with the butt of my sponge. For brows, we're gonna switch things up and go in with a pomade. This is the KVD Vegan Beauty 24 Hour Super Brow Longwear Pomade in the shade Medium Brown. I remember buying this and loving it, but I haven't used it in forever. So, um, my brows are looking insane. I've pretty much only been using pencils for the last several months. I can't remember the last time I used a pomade. So hopefully my brows don't look crazy, but we'll see. I'm just using my spoolie. And then I'm actually gonna use this little brush, which is from Morphe. This is the M158. And I'm gonna use the little liner side and 
we're gonna dip in. So I'm just gonna kind of coat both sides of it. And then once there's like a lot of product on here, I sort of will go back and forth like this in the cap just to like the lid, the underneath of the lid. Um, just so it's not like chunky when I'm applying it and it's not too pigmented. So once I get a lot of that product off, I am going to, oh boy, that's dark. Fill in the tails of my brows. The, this is instruction from a novice when it comes to brow pomades. I do not know what I'm doing. I've probably used a brow pomade like five to seven times in my life. So just keep that in mind. I am not a pro. Brows are definitely not my specialty. I just kind of let them do their thing because they are already pretty full as is. I just like to even them out a little bit in this arch area. Also, I like to sort of build up on the arch because I feel like it lifts my brows, lifts them up, and then it just makes me look happier. <laughs> because I do have such dark eyebrows, I feel like a lot of times it can make me look like annoyed, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> so I like to try to lift them up because I feel like that makes me look happier than when they're just like straight across. I wish my brows were like up here. But they're not, so <laughs> oh well. And then for brow gel, I'm just going in with the Morphe Translucent Brow Setting Gel. This is a great affordable option. It really does a good job at keeping your brows in place. And I feel like I'm, I'm I don't want to say I'm a snob with clear brow gel, but I definitely know what I like. <laughs> and this is a good one. So <laughs> I, um, I, I've had my fair share of experiences trying a bunch of clear brow gels. I feel like our eyebrows look cute. I like them. I like them a lot. <laughs> they match like this color of my hair better. Like when my hair is in a bun, it sort of vibes better because when my hair is down, it looks a lot blonder and then people tell me I color my eyebrows too dark and I'm like, that's the natural color of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, I'm not sorry. But anyway, okay. I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit. We're gonna work on the eyes for eyeshadow, you guys. I'm pulling out the Naked 3. This is an old palette. I was gonna use my original Naked palette, but that's literally 10 years old, and I don't know if that's smart. Also, like, half the shadows are gone because I hit pan on them and, like, used them up completely, so I figured we would go for Naked 3 because it's still a major throwback, but I don't know. We'll see. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Sorry for the brief intermission. I just got off the phone with Allie, my lovely friend Allie Dawson. If you guys aren't subscribed to her channel, make sure you go check her out. I will have her channel linked down below. She is amazing. She is literally one of my best friends and I met her through the internet and I love her so much. I'm sure most of you guys know who she is because I feel like I talk about her all the time. But anyway, we just got off the phone and we're like planning something exciting. So yeah, super fun. Um, anyway, we're gonna move on to the eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and prime my eyes with my MAC Paint Pot. This is my go-to eye primer. I usually like to stick to the same eye primer just because I know how shadows perform on top of this. So this way I know if the shadows are funky, it's most likely the actual eyeshadow palette and not the primer because obviously I've used this a lot and I'm pretty familiar with its performance. And I am just applying this with my Morphe M173. It's just like a rounded, well it's not really round right now because there's like product all over it, but sort of like a little puff ball um, on the end of the brush. And I feel like I really like the shape. It's nice and dense, so it applies the cream product really well. And yeah, it just does a really good job at smoothing it out. So there we have it. Now it's time to play with some ancient eyeshadow. <laughs> I wanted to mention right here, my foundation is looking bad. <laughs> I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but um, I noticed my powder sort of like looking really powdery here. So I tried to like tap it out and it looks like mm, scaly. <laughs> I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but um, I feel like if I were to touch my skin, it would probably transfer. And I feel like it's the powder. I don't know for sure though, but I feel like it's the powder. So 
I, I'm just, I think I'm not gonna give this another try because every single time that I use it, it doesn't work out for me. Um, and I applied like the rest of this stuff, like the powders and stuff on top of my cheeks and it looks great there. I just think under the eyes, this powder doesn't work very well. So I think I might end up decluttering that actually. All right, I'm gonna take my E23 and I still have the original brush in here, oh my gosh. I'm gonna take the shade Limit, which is this matte mauve color, and I'm gonna put this in the crease. Oh my gosh, I'm actually gonna look up when this palette came out because I know I bought it right when it launched. When did the Naked 3 palette come out? December 6th, 2013. That was over seven years ago. I've had this palette for seven years. I'm putting a seven year old eyeshadow on my eyes right now. Do not do as I do. Disclaimer, do at your own risk. <laughs> I don't want you guys to try this at home because um, I don't know if this is expired or not. So um, I'm just gonna put this in the crease. It feels super soft and that just blended out so well. I might zoom you guys in a little bit more. I don't know. Are y'all close enough? It actually still feels really soft in the pan too, like it doesn't have hard pan or anything. I can see there's a little bit of kick up when I put my brush in there, but I'm not being super gentle, I would, wouldn't say. Um, so, I feel like the formula is still bomb. I just wanted to double check on Sephora's website and see if this is still even available. And it looks like it is. It's $54. That's crazy. I remember like the first Naked palette I bought, I'm pretty sure it was like $49. And then they raised the price of the Naked palettes to like $52. And now they're $54. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't think that, I don't know, like would I pay $54 for this now? Probably not. Like if this came out... Limit, and I think that one's strange, and then burner was that one? Oh boy, I need to be careful. That was so funny. Okay, anyway, um, I'm gonna be careful when I show this now, but now I'm gonna go into this matte shade here. It's called Nooner. It's a little bit deeper than the first matte shade that we went in with, and I'm gonna tap this in my outer corner. That's how you know this palette is old. <laughs> The glue doesn't even work anymore. I will say I like the mauve eye looks. I feel like I kind of stayed away from them for a while. I used to get a lot of comments saying that like, you know, they wanted me to do different eye looks, like not just use pink eyeshadow every single day. But I found that like for the most part, I just prefer like these mauve pink tones on my eyes. That's just what I like. So I'll still switch things up, but I'm gonna try to focus on makeup that I like to wear and that I think, you know, could possibly look good on me personally. So that's why I decided it wouldn't be a problem if we played with some pink eyeshadow today. So now I have to pick which shimmer shade to put on my eyes. So I'm gonna swatch a couple of options. So here are three shades that I'm deciding between. The lightest one over here is called Dust. Then we have this one which is called Trick. And then this one's called Buzz. Um, I feel like I kinda like the shade Trick. And I think I'm gonna just use my finger to try to apply that to my lid and see how it looks. Oof. Very, oh, hello. It's very mm, lackluster. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. It doesn't look very exciting on my eye, but maybe if I build it up, it'll look better. There it is on my eye. I don't know if it's just like the shadow has gotten dull over time or if metallics in the industry have just improved so much over the last seven years that like now my expectations are just a lot higher because I know that I have some amazing like shimmery shadows that I don't have to wet the brush for or anything. Um, so I don't know. I remember this being like, you know, like the Urban Decay with metallics is being gorgeous, but 
I feel like they just look kind of blah. Like they don't look sparkly. They just look kind of textured and like satin. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. Like a textured satin. I think the color is really pretty. It sort of has a nice like red warmth to it depending on like the angle it's almost like a duochrome but like not like quite there so yeah i feel like this is a very basic eye i don't know how i feel about it i don't think i really like that i think the mattes are still really good but either this palette just the the shimmer formula has changed or you know shimmers have just gotten better over the years and now this is like blah when back in the day it was awesome so one of those two, um, I can hear the little pans like rattling around in there. I have to be careful with that. <laughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and put on some mascara. And for mascara, I'm actually using a new product. This is the Air Volume Mega Mascara. And I used this for the first time in my ColourPop lip swatch video. I was wearing it there and I loved it. So I'm going to use this again today, put on some mascara, and then we'll finish the look off with some highlighter and lips. I realize now that I probably should have finished with lips and highlighter and setting spray before putting mascara on, but it is what it is. Here's what the mascara looks like on. I love it. It makes my lashes look so full. It looks like I have a ton of lashes and it gives me some nice length and also volume and I love how dark it is. I have it in the shade, the black shade, I don't even know what shade this is, like black is black or whatever. Um, and I will say you can get carried away and it can get a little clumpy so just be careful when you're like layering it on but you can layer it on without it looking like spidery and clumpy and weird so I love this mascara this like might be one of my new favorites I still love the Pat McGrath and the L'Oreal carbon black voluminous mascara but this one is like a new like current favorite for me so i've only used it twice but i am loving it for highlighter i'm going in with a palette that i was supposed to put in my everyday makeup drawer and then i forgot but my lovely friend dan from the troll tribe over on discord um reminded me that i said in a video if i forget to put this in my everyday makeup drawer remind me so shout out to dan for reminding me this is the anastasia beverly hills nicole guerrero glow kit I purchased this when they re-released it last year or the year before um, and would you be surprised to know that I've never used it before <laughs> so I'm gonna be putting this in my everyday makeup drawer and I also want to use it today so let me find my highlighter brush this is the best highlighter highlighter brush in the entire world and I don't even know what color to go in with I'm kind of thinking this one here this is the shade glow getter and just gonna tap into this. I used to live for the glow kits from ABH. Like, I still have all of them. <laughs> I have like that glow, sun dipped, the other one. Um, I have like the pink, like candy one. I have the moon child. I have the other one that looks like the moon child. <laughs> and I have this one. And I have the ultimate glow kit. Look at that highlighter. Oh, oh my god, I forgot how good this formula was. The ABH Glow Kit formula is insane. Look at that. Oh my god, I love, I love, I'm so happy. I am so happy, and I'm pretty sure this is still available. Um, I think I saw it on Sephora's website like a couple weeks ago. Mm, mm, I love it, I love it so much. Oh my god, this is like throwing me back to... The Becca highlighter days, the glow kit days. Oh my gosh, look at how pretty. I'm obsessed. I'll put like a little bit right here too. <laughs> you guys definitely need this palette. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And I love the packaging. Like this vibe is so beautiful. I love that. Okay, and now to finish the lips off. I pulled these. I'm not sure. I, I'll probably pick one of these. So as I mentioned, I did that ColourPop lip swatch video and that reminded me that I actually have some other ColourPop lippies. These ones are the Just a Tint lip crayons. I have four shades. I don't know which one I want to use, um, but I'll tell you what shades I have. I have Give Me Some More. Then we have Rise and Shine. Every time I hear that, I think of Kylie Jenner. <laughs> 
Then we have the Strand. And then this one is Chubby Bunny. I'm kind of thinking this one, which is called Give Me Some More. I feel like this is the, like, most nude. Ooh. That's actually really pigmented. I feel like Kim Possible with my darker upper lip. <laughs> Um, and they're really hydrating. That's also like part of why I pulled these because my lips are like so dry. Uh, so I figured this is sort of like a balm. So it might give me some good hydration. I think that's really cute. It's a little bit warm toned. It kind of like makes the eye look look a little warmer on the inner corner. And I think it looks good together. So once again, this is the shade Gimme, Gimme, G-I-M-M-E. S'more, S apostrophe, M-O-R-E. <laughs> Super cute, love that. Oh, and it tastes slash smells so good. <laughs> I'm so happy I can smell again. Um, so yeah, these are super nice. I really like this lot. I need to start using those more. And I wanna see if they have like a pinky nude one, like not this color exactly, but more of just like a pinky beige color. I don't know. I got those in like collections, uh, uh, you know, over the time that I've been collecting Colourpop, so. All right, now the last step in our makeup routine is setting spray, and I grabbed this one from Flower Beauty. I haven't found very many products from Flower Beauty that I love, um, and I don't remember what my thoughts are on this. So this is the Seal the Deal Long Lasting Setting Spray, and it's a matte finish, oh boy. I'm gonna shake this up in case there's any like white powder in here. All right, let's give her some sprays, oh. The nozzle's glitching. <laughs> when I spray it, it starts off good, but then when the pump starts going back up, there's like a line. Okay, well, here we go. Mm -mm. <laughs> I have to like push down at my face and then turn it away as the pump starts to go back up because, oh, it's broken. It's not working anymore. I broke it. Dang it. Well, I guess we'll never know why <laughs> I have such bad luck with pumps on <laughs> setting sprays. I guess I can't give my full thoughts on that, but that is the finished makeup look. I'm going to zoom you guys out and give you my final thoughts. All right, you guys, so here is the finished look. I absolutely love the way that my makeup turned out overall. I think this is a super pretty, natural, sort of like everyday makeup look. I love it. So from the beginning, the primer, I forgot how much I liked this primer. I love the texture. I love that it's a mattifying primer, but it doesn't feel silicone-y. <laughs> That's not a word, but silicone-based. It doesn't feel slippery and greasy, which I, I hate those primers. But this one I love. Love that there's matte primer that feels good when you apply it. The foundation is so good. I need a new shade. It's a little bit too deep for me. It looks okay on camera. But in person, I can tell there's a little bit of a difference in skin tone from my neck to my face. I probably just need a new one in general because this is probably so old. So I definitely will be repurchasing this though because it looks amazing. It looks so natural. I would say it's not like the fullest coverage foundation, but it definitely is buildable. And I would say it's a medium to full coverage foundation. And it looks really natural. I love the finish of it. The concealer, I kind of forgot that we applied this concealer I have no complaints I think it looks really nice um yeah it says it's a long wear foundation or concealer so I'll have to like wear it and see how it wears throughout the day but so far my first impressions are great the powder is a no-go for me unfortunately I've used it probably like 10 times and every single time I have a problem with my makeup somehow and it's always seems to be the powder so unfortunately I'm actually going to be decluttering this but um, if you love this powder, I'm so happy for you. I'm not trying to come for you, but uh, yeah, this unfortunately did not work for me. The contour kit, I it doesn't look bad now, um, but it was trickier to use than I thought. I definitely want to play with this some more though. I might actually try to slide this into my everyday makeup drawer as well. Do they even make this product? I don't know. I couldn't tell you, <laughs> but I think they do. Hopefully they do. <laughs> I don't even know, but um, I think this is all right. I sort of have mixed feelings on that, but I couldn't give a definite like recommend or not just based on my first time using it. The blush I love. I've used this formula before. I just felt like I hadn't used 
these in a while so um, the pop of peach one is my favorite I have two of them and I just love peach blushes so I definitely recommend that the highlighter is probably one of my favorite things from this video I miss having the super intense like highlighted cheekbones and everything I know it might be like out of style now but I love it and this palette is gorgeous and we only used one shade I this formula is just so good very happy that I pulled that one back out the brows I love I I love this pomade I don't know what it is but this is really nice I like it better than the benefit one actually I think the benefit one is just a little bit too dry also I like the color on this one this is medium brown I feel like it matches my brows perfectly I wish that you didn't have to like dirty another makeup brush but it is what it is I definitely will be using this more often the palette is honestly disappointing to me I was so excited at first because of how good the mattes were performing but the shimmer is just like not there like it's just not so this is a little bit disappointing to me I am gonna keep this because it's like a part of my collection <laughs> and I there, I have a special attachment to the naked palettes from Urban Decay so I wouldn't recommend purchasing this now, but I do want to keep that and I am happy I have it. And it was fun to like sort of have a little bit of a throwback and play with an older makeup product. I love this formula. It's super hydrating. It smells nice and it actually has some really good pigment to it. Very comfortable to wear and they have a bunch of really pretty colors. So this is a definite hit for me. The setting spray is a flop, but mostly because the nozzle just like you know stopped working and it was already acting weird while it was working just there so yeah that sucks <laughs> that was a flop and then I think the last product that I used was the mascara which is a newer product to me like I said second time I used it and love it absolutely love it everybody needs to try this it is so freaking good once again this is the air volume mega mascara and that is pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did please don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up i love you guys so so much i will have all of these products linked down below in the description box for you guys in case you are interested in checking them out i love you guys so so much i hope you all have a wonderful day and i will see you all in the next one bye